here we have a love story. Boyfriend, girlfriend, get into a fight. He's bringing her flowers. She's not having it. She's going to throw a water balloon right on his head. And what she's going to do is she's going to throw it straight up in the air. This will hit his head with a uh, higher velocity than if she had just dropped it. So she's going to throw it straight up in the air as, as fast as she can throw, which is 10 meters per second. And the balloon's path will look something like this. And smack him right on the head. We're going to solve this problem. And the questions we're, we want to know are, how high does the balloon go before it starts coming down? How long is the balloon in the air? How much total distance has the balloon traveled? And at what speed does the water balloon hit his head. And here are the dimensions, the building. Well, the building plus where she releases a balloon is 17 meters. So the building height itself is only 16. And he stands two meters high. Great. Let's go about solving this problem. So first, how high does the balloon go before coming down? Well, very important to remember that at its highest point, the velocity is zero. How do I know that? Well, I throw the marker up in the air. It goes, now watch in slow motion. Stops for an instant. It has to in order to change directions. And at that instant, its velocity is zero. Then, so that's very useful to us because we can use, for example, this equation, v final equals v initial plus acceleration times time. And this just comes from the definition of acceleration. Now, what is the final height? Well, the final height is zero. Because if I want to know the time it takes to get to the highest point, well, I plug in zero right here. And that will force the time to be the time it takes to go from here to the highest point. Initial velocity is 10 meters per second. And then plus at, the acceleration, well, it's just the acceleration of gravity, minus 10 meters per second squared times time. And now we can um, add to both sides, ah, yeah, times t, times t, and, well, negative plus its positive, this equals zero. So now I have that 10 meters per second squared times time is equal to 10 meters per second. And now I will boldly divide both sides by 10 meters per second squared. These guys cancel. You divide something by itself, it equals one. And then here, watch how the units cancel. Uh, cancel, 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 and one of these, and then 10 divided by 10 is just 1, so I have t equals 1 second. This guy flips up top. So it's going to take 1 second for the balloon to reach its highest point. Excellent. Well, how far did it go in that 1 second? Well, we can, um, well, we can use that the displacement is equal to the average velocity times time. What's the average velocity? Starts at 10, ends at 0, the average is 5. So 5 meters per second times 1 second, and we can see that the seconds cancel, and therefore I'm left with 5 meters. So the balloon increased in height by 5 meters, so how high does the balloon go before coming down? Well, what's its max height? Relative to the ground, you start at 17, you go up another 5 meters, the answer would be 22 meters. Excellent. Now let's ask the question, how long is the balloon in the air? Well, we know that this part of the journey here took one second. How long will this part of the journey take until it hits him in the head? Well, what is that distance? Well, this right here is 22 meters. He, his head stands 2 meters above the ground. 
So that's a difference of 20 meters. So the balloon has to travel a distance of negative 20 meters. And we also know that at the top, its velocity is zero. So the initial velocity is equal to zero. So that's what we know, and what we want to find is this, the time of this journey downward. Well, we can use this equation. Displacement equals initial velocity times time plus one-half a t squared. And now we can just plug in the values. I know that this is a negative 20 meters. I know the initial velocity is zero. Zero times anything is zero. And then finally, plus one-half minus 10 meters per second squared times the time. And this is simplifies to minus 5 meters per second squared times time. And now I will boldly divide both sides by 5 meters per second squared. And all right, we'll do negative 5 meters per second squared. And you can see these guys cancel out. The meters cancel. 20 or negative 20 divided by negative 5 is 4. This guy pops up top. Up. Oh, and sorry, I lost my square here. And now, the only thing left to do is take the square root of both sides, and I get t equals plus or minus 2 seconds. We'll take the positive value for time. And now I know the downward part of the journey takes 2 seconds, and 2 plus 1 is 3, so the total time that the balloon is in the air is 3 seconds. Great, so we, we got that. Now, see part two to answer these two questions.